is the dead of night. It has nothing to do with time. It can happen in sunshine or in moonlight, in the best of weather or the worst. For the dead of night is a state of mind, that dark, unfathomed region of the human consciousness from which all the unknown terrors of our lives emerge. The dead of night exists in all of us, and no one knows at what strange, unexpected moment it will make itself known. And so tonight, for your entertainment, three tales, one of mystery, one of imagination, and one of terror. How'd you get way out here? Well, I'll tell you why I came. One of the fellas in town that buys aches from you said he saw an old wreck of a car. Oh. That it was in the barn, so I figured maybe there's something left of it, you know, that I could put together. Well, I got one. I don't think you'll think much of it, though. I'm sure I'll never know how I got to a time and place no one else in the world remembers. I only know it started on a Sunday morning in an old barn off the county road. My name is Frank Cantrell. When it happened, I was a senior at Point College in Hylesburg, Illinois, my hometown. Oh, my God. So Jordan, all right, and a playboy. Jordan Playboy, I can't believe it. How long has it been here? Uh, happened in 26, as I recall. What happened? This dude was racing a train out on the county road. And he tried to beat it to the grade crossing, and he didn't make it. The engine hit the rear wheel there and flipped her over and killed both him and his girl. Young folks, too. They weren't any older than you are. How much? Yeah. Let's have it for $100. Mister, you got a deal. Uh, it's none of my business, but uh, what do you want it for? I'm going to restore it. Go on. Make it run again? More than that, I'm going to put it back just the way it was in 1926. Well, she's all yours now. And so she was, all mine. The right rear wheel and spare, hopeless wads of wire spokes and twisted rims. The body caved in and the motor a mess. I didn't mind it a bit. I traded a Winton nameplate and hubcaps, plus a Saxon hood, to a man in Fairfield, Connecticut for two Playboy wheels. And they arrived, rusty, with some of the spokes broken and loose, but just what I needed. And I restored that car, sanded off every scrap of paint, took out every dent and bump, welded every tear, and burnished every weld. It took a long time, but at last it was done, repainted. Every nickel-plated part restored, re-nickled, and replaced. The seats reupholstered. Everything complete to the final missing part. A Jordan radiator cap, which I traded a Duesenberg floor mat. Just for the fun of it, I decided to put the old license plates back on and even had the original ignition key in its old leather case. At least, I thought it was just for the fun of it. Frank, you'll get a ticket using those old plates. Well, it'll be okay just this once, Mom. I'm only going to Cresswell, along the old county road. The old county road? But why go that way? You can get there to Cresswell on the highway in less than 10 minutes. I can't go that way, Mom. Why not? Listen, look at this car. It's exactly the way it was in 1926. I can't drive it on a four-lane highway. Heck, back when this car was new, that old road was the highway. I'll bet it was driven there many a time. Anyway, that's where it has to be, and that's where I'm going to take it tonight. drive along that old road with the top down. Summer air streaming over my face and through my hair. They're alive with the heavy fragrances of summer darkness. I wasn't even thinking. 
just living and enjoying it. I don't know when it happened exactly, but the first evidence of it came when I saw those headlights moving toward me. Holy mackerel, a moon! A moon roadster! Oof. A Hane speedster? about time with a capital T, but can't say I ever really knew what it meant. However, that night, as I left the old county road and drove into Cresswell, I thought maybe I was beginning to understand. I remembered what someone had once said. I think it was Einstein or somebody like that. He compared time to a winding river with all of us in a boat drifting along between two high banks. And we can't see the future just beyond the next curve, or the past beyond the curves in back of us. But it's all still there, as real as the moment around us. To which I now add my own theory, that you can't drive into the past in a modern car, because there were no modern cars then. And you can't drive into 1926 along a four-lane superhighway. But my car and I, the way I felt about it anyway, were literally rejected that night by our own time. Moving along that old road through the summer evening, I simply drifted into the time my Jordan belonged to. young man. That Vincent is the wildest driver in the whole county. One of these days he's going to kill himself. And that girlfriend of his, I wouldn't wonder. Was that your car he took? Because it sure looked like his. No, it was mine. Just parked it here a few minutes ago. Then I heard the people coming out of the theater. And then he's... Yes? Maybe he'll bring it back. Why don't you go down to the station house and report it? 
Use our name if you like. I, we saw the whole thing. No, it's all right. I'm sure he'll bring it back. Thank you for your help. Afraid we didn't give you much. You change your mind, though, and decide to report it. Our name is Dorset. It's Dorset. Thank you. Good night, young man. Good night. My grandmother used to live in Cresswell. When I was a boy, I used to visit her and play with the boy next door when he visited his grandparents. Their name was Dorset. I knew these people, but they didn't know me. Of course, how could they have? They wouldn't even meet me for another 40 years. And I would be 12 years old then, and they would be in their 80s. There was nothing I could do about the theft of my car. Report it to the police, try to explain to them who I was and where they could reach me, show them my driver's license with a date on it. Somehow I knew my car wasn't coming back. So all I could do was walk and wonder what I was going to do now, here in Cresswell, on a summer night in 1926, 30 years before I was born. I knew that I shouldn't have gone there, but I couldn't help myself. If I went up on that porch and rang the bell, a man or a woman would answer it. And maybe a nine-year-old boy, sleeping upstairs, would call down to ask who it was. A nine-year-old boy who one day was to become my father. But I couldn't go up on that porch and ring that bell. I knew that. I was here by sufferance or accident. I drifted into this time, but had no right to intrude on it. I'd spent the night in Cresswell, a visitor from another time. And just as mysteriously and unnoticeably as I drifted there, I was back again, back where I belonged. I met Helen McCauley when school started up in September. She was in my economics class. A sophomore, I learned though I didn't remember seeing her around before. Which, in a way, is the point of my story. Hi. Hi. Have a good swim? Oh, beautiful. You ready for a bite to eat? Oh, we sure are. Oh, I'm famished. You just dig right in. There's plenty for everybody. <laughs> Don't worry, he will. <laughs> Honey, will you go get those other sandwiches up there? Say, yeah. Frank, Helen tells me you're interested in old cars. Yeah, I've restored them. Hey, you got anything good going for you right now? 
Yeah, I'm working on an old Duesenberg. Ah, that sure is a good old car. Yeah, it is. But I'll never replace the one that was stolen. Stolen? When was that? Nearly six months ago now. Maybe 50 years. What? Nothing. What kind was it? Probably never heard of it. It was an old Jordan Playboy. <laughs> never heard of it. Kid, I've got one. No. <laughs> Surprise. And you thought I just brought you over here so they could look at you. Wait, you've got a Jordan Playboy. It's not just an ordinary Jordan. Come on. It's in the garage. I'll show you. I don't say it's in running condition far from it, but it's a Jordan and a Playboy, and I've had it since I was 20 years old. Beautiful. Oh, Lord, that's a beautiful automobile. Yes, it is. It surely is, and I'm glad you think so. You know, not many young people would appreciate it. You know, this is an old ad, one of the famous ads for the Jordan Playboy. And the headline reads, Somewhere West of Laramie. It goes on to speak of this brawny, graceful thing. That revels with a wandering wind and roars like a caproni biplane. <laughs> Say, listen, Frank. Do you think you could get this thing running? Oh, for sure. I restored mine completely. Well, then, I want you to have it. It's all yours. Oh, no, I can't. It's priceless. No, 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 no. Now, listen to me. If you can get this car running and looking good again, all I want is the joy of driving it just one more time. Mr. McCauley, what, what's the original uh, paint job on this? Well, it used to be a beautiful forest green. <sighs> I'm sorry, I was, uh, I was just picturing you driving it around when the Jordan was new. A car like this must be quite a temptation to uh, open her up now and then. Now and then? <laughs> All the time. <laughs> oh, if my parents had only known. Do you know that he almost got us killed one night? Just before we were married. How? Foolishness. <laughs> Just plain foolishness. <laughs> we were racing the train. We were racing? <laughs> it was the thing to do in those days. I don't remember being asked. We almost beat it, too. We were actually ahead of it. And then we came to the grade crossing. No gates, just the crossroad going right across the tracks. And I started to turn, and in that last instant, in the very last fraction of a second, I knew we couldn't make it. We were just too late. So I didn't turn. And we tore along the road beside that train. <laughs> the engineer leaning out of his cab, shaking his fist and <laughs> cussing us out for all he was for. <laughs> Where did that happen? Just outside of town, coming home from Cresswell. Listen, did something delay you that night? I mean, just a few seconds, just long enough so that you knew you couldn't try and cross in front of that train. I don't know. Like what? Like someone uh, running out in front of your car and doing like this. Huh? No, Frank, I'm afraid not. Why? I kind of figure that's the way it happened. It's not important. You know, I don't even remember why we were in Cresswell that night. <laughs> there was no question now. The license plates were identical. 
These are the Jordan's old plates? Yep. The first ones that she ever had. If you had been killed that night, Helen wouldn't be here. Uh, Frank, we got to get going. Huh? We, we've got to get going. We're late. Oh, okay. I'll get a run for you, Mr. McCauley. Fix her up just the way she was. Give her a second chance, eh? Or a third. I don't believe that the Jordan Playboy is anything more than metal, glass, rubber, and paint formed into a machine. And yet, I can't stop myself from feeling that when that old Jordan was restored by me, given a second chance, as it were, it went back to the time and place that would give Vince McCauley and his girl a second chance, too. Because someone on that July evening in 1926 had dashed in front of their car, delaying them for two or three seconds. I had intruded on that time just long enough for Vince McCauley to change his mind about trying to cross in front of that train, live to marry the girl beside him, and eventually have a granddaughter named Helen, the girl I was one day going to marry. And just like her grandparents did almost 50 years before, we'd leave on our honeymoon in the very same car. This brawny, graceful thing, which revels along with the wandering wind and roars like a Caproni biplane. My beautiful Jordan Playboy. Go back to work. Don't speak now. It is it's just a little. Bit. It's my throat. It's nothing. No, God. No, Peter. This way. I'm going to die. Listen. I'm going to die. You will not give way to superstitions. I'm going to die. Listen to me. Alexis. 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 Cook! 
Inside. You, on your way. Put it on the desk, Carol. It will do its work, Dr. Guria. For my wife, yes. Sir? It will reassure her. That is all I can expect of it. Sir, you do not believe that it will stop? I do not believe there's anything to stop, apart from a venomous insect or a rodent. Sir, we searched Madame's room. That will be all, Carol. Yes, sir. Uh, sir. Marie and Cook wish to be discharged. I've dissuaded them for now, but I don't know how long it will last. Oh, Carol. Yes, sir. Inform the servants that if they do not stop telling the townspeople what has occurred here, they will not have to seek this charge. They will be freely granted it. Yes, sir. I knew you would come. I cannot tell you how pleased I am to see you. Uh, what's wrong? Your letter only said that Alexis was not well. Let us talk in the study. I imagine you were surprised to see me answering the door. Well, I did wonder where Carl was. He's sleeping, poor fellow. He's been doing the work of four. All the other servants have left. Why? Sit down. Did you notice how empty the streets were? Yes, I did. Where are all the people? Huddling, terror-stricken in their houses, I expect. 
I don't understand. You saw what is hanging on the windows and the doors? Michael, I'm on the brink of madness. The Lexus is being destroyed by a vampire. What? Each day she sinks deeper. I can't deal with it. I simply can't deal with it. Well, Professor, sit. Sit down. Please. You've been attacked as well? Michael, I just don't know what to do anymore. I've had every inch of countryside searched. Graveyards ransacked. Crypts inspected. Nothing. There is something. Something which is draining us of life. I can't see it. I can't hear it. I can't do anything. How can I save her? How long has she been like this? Days and days. Retrogression has been constant. Michael. Yes. You'll be fine. Just fine. I don't understand why you didn't call me sooner, Professor. But never mind. She'll be all right now. Tonight, we'll watch together. This will help to keep us awake. Thank you. Oh, Professor, why don't you try to get some sleep? I'll watch for a while. It would do no good. Mm. Once again, scarcely tasted with that stench of garlic in the air. Yes. My flesh reeks of it. I do not know what will happen to this town until this, this creature is discovered and destroyed. The people are paralyzed with fear. I just wonder, has it been anywhere else in the village? It does not need to go anywhere else. It can find everything that it craves within these walls. Now, when Alexis and I are dead, then it will go elsewhere. The people know that. They're waiting. What about Carl? Have you ever considered... No, no, no. He's as terrified as we are. He puts a cross round his neck. He seals the windows and the door of his... of his room with garlic. Indeed, he has even put one of these monsters to rest himself. No. Carl will not endanger us. I've... It seems impossible that men of science like us... 
Yeah. How could science affect this, uh, this horror? Science does not even believe in its existence. If I was to get the topmost men of science into this room, they would say, my friend, you are deluded. There is no such thing. As a vampire. Michael. Michael. Out of that, sir. Look, Carol. Serge, it's our last chance. One more night, she'll be gone. in here. Thank you. 
Sleep well, my dear. Your nightmare is ended. Just begin when you learn that your lover is dead. Did you just get in? Yeah, a couple of minutes ago. Oh, how was the flight? It was OK. Good. Alma, what's wrong? Well, nothing is wrong, nothing. I'm just uh, I'm a little tired. You didn't call your mother, did you? Um, no. Alma. Please stop worrying about me. <laughs> That's a good one. How am I supposed to do that after what we've been through? You mean since Bobby died? You know, uh, I'll never understand you. Well, what is there to understand? I mean, you know, for the last two months, if I so much as even hinted that Bobby was gone, I mean, you, you, you were just getting all over. I just wasn't ready to accept that then. I never should have taken this trip. Just stop worrying about me. Not as long as you continue to keep seeing those phony psychics and spiritualists. Do you understand? <laughs> there won't be any need for that anymore. Alma, call your mother, please. If you don't, I will. All right. Now, you promise me that you'll do it. Yes. John, yes. Okay, I'll call you tonight.
command thee, Hieronymus, to do whatever I desire. For thou art conjured by the name of the everlasting living and true God, Heliorem. Come fulfill my desire and persist unto the end in accordance with my will. I conjure thee by him to whom all creatures are obedient, by the ineffable name, Terra Grahamaton, by which name the elements are overthrown, the air is shaken, the sea is turned black, fire is quenched, the earth shudders, and all of the host of things in heaven, of things in earth, of things in hell, do tremble and are confounded. Euronymous, prince of death, return my son who drowned by accident. I command thee, return him to me now. Hello? Is someone there? I woke up and, and remembered who I was and left their house. 
can walk for miles, miles and miles in the rain. Whose house? What house? Where? What house? I, the name was Green or Breen. I, I, I don't rem rem remember. He's so cold. It is cold. Just a minute. God, it is cold. Come on, we'll get those wet things off you. I'm gonna take care of you. My Bobby. Bobby's home. I've kept your room just the way you left it. I never touched it. Come on, sit right down here. There. Now, let's get that wet sweatshirt off you. Okay, now tell Mommy, darling, exactly what happened. Well, well I remember water, cold water, and, and I couldn't breathe, and I... There were these people. They they found me lying on the sand, and, and, and they picked me up. On the beach? Yeah. I knew you didn't drown. I knew it. I knew it all along. For the longest time, Bobby, I thought you were dead. Dead? But you're alive. You're alive. You're really alive. My baby is alive. Oh, you're so alive, Bobby. You're alive. You're alive. I'm so hungry. We gotta give my Bobby anything Bobby wants. Oh, so my precious baby is home. In the morning, we'll take it to Dr. Croswell, okay? Why? Well, to be sure you're all right. Tell me about those people. You said their name was Green or Green or something? I think so. I'm going to telephone them right away in the morning, find out why they didn't call the police. Oh, but they did, Mommy. No, they didn't. Well, the police would have called us. Us? Your father and I. Where is he? He's on a business trip. I can't wait for him to telephone. Oh, boy. He's not going to believe me. OK, Bobby, now what would you like to eat? I don't know. Oh, come on, some soup, hmm? Oh, cocoa? I know. One of those sandwiches you like. Oh, that is a good idea. <laughs> if I told your father we were eating tuna fish at this hour. You hear me? What the? How many doors in the house? What? How many doors in the house? Well, that's a funny question. I don't know. I think you know as well as I do. There's the front door, right? And the garage door. And the family room door. That makes three. Donnie, are you sure that you Was you're... I always a good boy, Mommy? Of course you were a good boy. And did you love me? Did I love you? I do love you, darling, from the bottom of my and heart. And were you nice to me, Mommy? Why are you asking me these questions? Were you nice to me, Mommy? Yes. Of course I was. Why was I in the water? Why did those people find me on the beach? I don't know. I guess you were playing out on those rocks. Was I allowed to do that, Mommy? No, I told you not to. You told me never to play on the rocks? You were hungry, and that is the moment I don't want it. Okay. You make a suggestion, and then I'll make you whatever you'd like. I want to play a game. A game? Hide and seek. You're tired. Why don't we get some sleep, and then in the morning, I'll wake up and we'll play every game you want, all right? I want to play a game now! Bobby!
Bobby, please, don't do this to Mommy. Bobby, for the last time. Before inside, don't you realize that? Until tonight. Until tonight. 
tonight. Listen. John. What is it? There's something. What is it, Alma? I think... I think he's losing his mind. I don't even recognize him. I don't know... Do you know, do you know what he just did? Do you know that planter at the top of the stairs? At the top of the that, stairs? He just pushed that down on me. Pushed it down? Pushed it down on me! He just... Yes, and now he's running around upstairs in the dark. In the dark? And he insists on playing some game. You, insists you know that... on playing some game? Why are you repeating everything I say? Repeating Why are everything you, you say? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I fooled you, didn't I? Oh, you're not very good at hide and seek, are you, Mommy? So let's switch places now, and I'll find you. Okay, Mommy, I'm starting to count. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. kitchen? Am I hot or cold? Oh, look what I found. A big, sharp knife. But where is Mommy? I know. Maybe she's in the closet. Yes, that would be a good place. Closet is a good place to hide. Isn't it, Mommy? Isn't it? Upstairs. <laughs> you fooled me, Mommy. You made me think you were downstairs when you were upstairs all the time. Well, here I come. Ready or not? He's going to punish you.
Bobby's gonna get you! Bobby's gonna get you, Mommy! to get you, Mommy! Sent me instead. <laughs> 